if you suspect that you have high functioning anxiety or you know that you have high functioning anxiety and you've been struggling for a really long time, you may be willing to try anything to get to a place of recovery. If you have high functioning anxiety, you are most likely ruminating a lot. You can't stop overthinking no matter what you do. Your brain just keeps going and going and going. And that overthinking may cause you to have insomnia and you can't go to sleep because you can't stop thinking. Or maybe you are able to fall asleep, but then as part of that natural sleep cycle, when you come up into a lighter place of sleep, boom, your mind just starts thinking because you've woken up just a little bit, just enough that your brain has a way to just sort of eke in there and start thinking. And then you're totally awake in the middle of the night and you cannot go back to sleep. Or maybe your high functioning anxiety is making you start to have some body symptoms. Uh, Maybe you felt a lot of constriction in your chest recently, or maybe you're starting to have some weird phantom back pain, or maybe your digestive system is just really off. You're feeling nauseous a lot of the time, or you just feel this sort of heavy weight somewhere in your gut. Those are all common and normal things that happen with chronic high functioning anxiety. So maybe you're at the point now where you're starting to research supplements because you know that you want to take a natural, holistic approach to healing your high-functioning anxiety. And so maybe you think that taking supplements is just a really great way for you to reduce your stress response. That seems pretty logical, right? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you my personal opinion about different supplements that you can take to help you recover from high-functioning anxiety. I'm Heather, I'm an anxiety coach, and I personally overcame high functioning anxiety and have had the opportunity and honor to work with hundreds of clients, helping them along their healing journey so that they could finally start feeling better in their everyday lives. So my own personal journey through recovering from high functioning anxiety started off with my high functioning anxiety really kicking in after I had kids. So let me tell you that I didn't know that I had high functioning anxiety. Looking back, I can see that I had high functioning anxiety for a really long time, probably about 10 years. And for a long time, I was able to sort of manage that. I was keeping it at bay just enough so that it didn't tip over into overwhelming my life. So I used to be the kind of person who would spend vast amounts of time working on a project. I was in college and then I was in grad school and then I would just spend tons and tons of time just tweaking and finessing and fine tuning assignments that I needed to turn in. And then after school, it was work projects. When I got out into the corporate world, it was me spending vast, vast amounts of time on things that I was working on so that I could make them perfect. I would spend days on something that I was working on. I would edit and I would revise and I would edit and I would revise over and over until I thought that whatever it was that I was working on was perfect. It was not uncommon for me to go into the office on Saturdays to work on something. I would you know, have my little key card, my little badge, and I would go into the office and literally no one else was there. I was the only person on a Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon sitting in the office, sitting at my desk, just working for hours because there was something that I wanted to make better and better and better. And so how I was able to keep that high functioning anxiety sort of under the surface at that time was that I had enough time in my life to sort of rest and recharge So other than work, uh, my responsibilities weren't really that big. Uh, I was living in a two bedroom apartment and it was easy to clean because it was pretty small. And I had enough time in the evenings after work and then on the weekends, enough time to sort of unwind enough that I could lower my stress response. But what happened when I had my first daughter all of that changed. So we moved in to a 2000 plus square foot house. 
So I was taking care of a baby, taking care of this house was much larger than the apartment that we had lived in before. And all of this was a massive trigger for me because of those high functioning anxiety, perfectionistic tendencies. So now it wasn't just me and the things that I was doing uh, to take care of myself and my own personal life, making those things perfect. It was everything else in my life too. So that heightened state of overthinking and worrying and trying to make everything so exact and so precise, it took over my life. I started ruminating like I never had before. It was way worse than it ever had been before. I remember a specific time in my life, I was very upset about an interaction that I had had with a particular person. And I started playing that interaction over and over in my head for weeks, literally for weeks. I was thinking about it every single day. I was thinking about in this interaction, in this conversation that I had had with this person, oh, I should have said this differently or I could have responded differently. And if I had said this, then they would have said that. And I was just playing this conversation now over and over in my head every single day. And at that time, I was only 29 years old. And because the high functioning anxiety was hidden from the outside, no one knew how much I was struggling on the inside. In fact, I used to hear things like, oh, Heather, you're so calm or you're so laid back. And I would think, what are you talking about? Because on the inside, that's not how I felt at all. And that's so common for high functioning anxiety for people to comment and tell you, oh, you're just such a calm person. But on the inside, you don't feel calm at all. And I realized that how I felt on the inside was not how I appeared on the outside to other people. And I think that that was actually a huge part of the problem because that made me think that my internal struggles and what I was dealing with on the inside maybe weren't that big of a deal because other people didn't see that there was an issue. So I just sort of thought, oh, this is like all in my head. So that just kept me in this thought loop. I just kept overworking. I kept overanalyzing. I kept overthinking. And all of that overanalyzing and overthinking, that led me to have insomnia a lot of the time. And the reality also is that I was just very unhappy in my life a lot of the time as well. So I imagine that a lot of what I just described may sound exactly like what you are struggling with right now. And if you are watching this video, you're actually a step ahead of where I was because I didn't know that high functioning anxiety was a thing. I didn't even know that it had a name. I didn't think I had anxiety because I had some sort of idea in my mind of what anxiety looked like. And uh, I just sort of didn't match up to that idea that was in my head. I can tell you that personally, I'm a holistic based person. I don't really like to take over the counter medications if I can avoid it. I try to watch my diet. I try to use like more natural based cleaning products or healthcare products, you know, that sort of thing. And so maybe that describes you too. At this point, you've probably started to research different natural supplements to help with your high functioning anxiety. Maybe you're in some online forums on Reddit or Quora where people are talking about different supplements that they have tried. Or maybe you're in some anxiety-related Facebook groups and you've seen supplement recommendations there. So through this research, you've probably heard of ashwagandha. Maybe you've heard of L-theanine or valerian root, or chamomile, or lemon balm, or CBD oil, which is becoming extremely popular. There are so many options out there. Are you supposed to take just one of these? Are you supposed to take more than one? Is it okay to mix them if you do take more than one? What time of day are you supposed to take these for the best effects? 
And most likely the biggest question that you have of all is out of all of the things that you have researched, out of all of the things that you have heard about, what is the best supplement, the one that is going to cure your high functioning anxiety? And if somebody asks me this, I have a really strong opinion. And my response is that there is no best supplement to cure your high functioning anxiety. So I want you to hear me out on this one. It's not ashwagandha. It's not CBD oil. Recovery and healing does not come from a pill. It doesn't come from a bottle. If you have been struggling with high functioning anxiety, as I did for years, you want relief. I totally get it. And you want to see results now, which I get too. And the desire to find a supplement to cure your high functioning anxiety, it's actually a misplaced effort on your part. Maybe if you take ashwagandha, you'll feel slightly less stressed. Maybe it may help lower your stress response. If you think about these companies that produce these supplements, it is their job to make money, right? It is their job to make and then to promote these products. Their job is to sell them. This totally makes sense, right? Like they're a company, they're in business to make money. There are really clear FDA rules about what supplement companies can and can't say that their product does. They cannot make a claim that their product is going to cure your anxiety, but it's sort of implied, right, in the way that they advertise their products, either in the colors that they use on the bottle, maybe even the fonts that they use on the bottle, uh, the colors that they use in the advertising, the images that they use in the advertising, all of that, the feelings that are portrayed in the ad. So if you start researching supplements online, which you probably already done if you're watching this video, you're going to start to see ads for other supplements or other anxiety related products because of the way technology works. It's those ad tracking pixels, right? They follow you around as you're going around on the internet. So then you start to see a new product, a new supplement that you hadn't seen before. And you think, oh, maybe this is the thing that I need. And then you go down that rabbit hole of doing more research, figuring out, oh, hey, is this the supplement or is this the product that's the best way to go? And really, this is the sort of society that we live in where we think, oh, there must be a product out there that's going to fix what is wrong with me. But a natural supplement isn't going to cure the reason that you have high functioning anxiety. You may be looking for a quick fix. And again, I totally get that. It sucks to be struggling. And it's like we want something and we want some resolution now so we can feel better now. I have clients who feel like they have tried everything. They say that I've tried everything. They've taken different supplements. They have read a ton of self-help books. They have meditated. They've given up coffee. They have tried everything that they can think of. And so my goal for you is for you to have long-term healing, overcoming your high functioning anxiety by healing the root cause, like the core reason that you feel the way that you do. Because when you heal the root cause, that is where change is made. That is how you start to feel different. And my hope for you is that you realize that chasing that next sort of quick fix, that next sort of band-aid approach isn't really going to get you to where you want to be. Recovery really does lie within. It does require some effort on your part to be willing to heal the root cause, the source of why you feel the way that you feel. And I understand that maybe you are thinking, oh yeah, but I just need something external. Something external is the way for me to help myself like a supplement. And that really is the overthinking part of your high functioning anxiety. You could think of it as the high functioning anxiety talking to you because your brain is going to work and it's going to work and it's going to work because the high functioning anxiety is trying to solve the problem. It is your anxiety talking. It's trying to tell you, oh, just try this or just try that. You just haven't found the answer yet. If you just keep trying this or you keep trying that, eventually you're going to heal yourself. I hope all this makes sense and it is guiding you to where you want to go.
If you're ready to start addressing your high functioning anxiety to actually fix the root cause, I work with individuals in one-on-one -on -one coaching and in group programs. I'm going to put a link for those options in the description down below. And I'm also going to link to another video about high functioning anxiety. I'm going to put that in a pinned comment down below. So please go and watch that video next. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.